104.1 KRB, a cumulus media station. Good morning, everyone. We ready? Live from the TFCU Energy Studio. The Rula and Ryan Show with producer Eric, Special K, and Sam. Well, right now you're going to have to settle for Sam, Ahmad, and Ryan. So we are checking in. With KHOU throughout the morning and uh, with us on the phone right now, literally on my cell phone because our phone system went down right now. Yeah. Cheetah, hey, thanks so much for doing this. Of course. Good morning. It's a critical time. So <laughs> thanks for having me on. We just want to get as much information out as we can anyway. It doesn't matter how you're doing it, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Cheetah, what is the latest that we need to know? Okay, so, you know, the National Hurricane Center has been releasing these advisories every hour this morning since 1 a.m. So the latest with Barrel, still a hurricane, max sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. The reason I want you to take note of that, the center of circulation, so the eye, is right now moving from Matagorda County to Wharton, and it's on the cusp there of Fort Bend County. The reason why that's to note the hurricane force winds will follow this. So not only could we see tropical storm force winds, but potentially hurricane force winds. So that's over 74 miles per hour. Wow. Well inland. I'm talking Wharton, Fort Bend, Harris County, Waller County, all areas that could be looking at winds over 74 miles per hour. Those are gusts, but even sustained winds between 40 to 80, uh, maybe through lunchtime today before barrel actually lifts out of here. Mm -hmm. So, Cheetah, uh, when are we looking at saying goodbye to the heavy rains here this morning? You know, the heavy rains, I I would love to say around noon, but I'm going to take you through about 2 or 3 o'clock. What happens with these rain bands, so you get a counterclockwise circulation around a tropical system, around an area of low pressure. Mm -hmm. So as barrel moves north, you still get that same circulation. So you're still going to be seeing some trailing rain bands. So some of the rain will be coming a little bit more intermittent, especially by noon today, that it's not going to be completely over, I think, till about, you know, three, four, five o'clock, so late afternoon, early evening, and then it's out of here. But the rain should become more intermittent starting around lunchtime today. Now, our northern counties, it'll be the opposite effect, right? Because the girl's moving north, it's coming out of the Gulf, moving northward so it takes all that moisture and energy with it so let's say areas from montgomery county walker county north of that haven't seen as much rain they will be feeling the strongest winds and the heaviest rain getting into lunchtime and and kind of thereafter what area of houston is going to actually get hit the hardest you know when you say that this is so widespread I mean, you've probably been reporting this, but almost a million people without power right now. Such a serious, It's it, there's not a specific area, but if you had to pick, I would say Western Harris, Fort Bend, Waller County, think areas basically west of 45. But even at that, you know, Hobby Airport, IAH, they've had, I mean, serious winds already and the center of circulation hasn't even really moved north. So it's just such a widespread event. I mean, you have to think in mind that Barrel is basically sitting directly on top of us. When mm-hmm. you look at a radar image right now, everyone is being impacted yeah. from rain to tropical storm winds. That's why we have those warnings all up and down, you know, the area. I mean, we're probably going to see on average seven to maybe 12 inches of rain on average across the area when all is said and done. And that's basically today. Wow. You know, really serious situation high water spots a threat storm surge along the coast dangerous to life threatening um i mean we're dealing with a category one hurricane basically sitting across the city can you explain that though for a lot of people that don't even know what the different categories are like what does category one mean yeah so um so when you see the winds if you see that over 74 miles per hour it's a category one hurricane If it were 96 miles per hour, that would be a Category 2, and and then they're on. Now, we didn't get to that, so it's a Category 1, still a Category 1. I think what's really interesting with Barrel, though, because it intensified almost just before landfall, it's sustaining its energy. A lot of times you get these landfalling tropical systems, and then they hit land, they die out. 
Mm-hmm. It's been sustained since 3.55 this morning. Jeez. So even though that's only, you know, you can think two or three hour period, um, to remain as a category one, that's a long time mm-hmm. over land. Water is what gives hurricanes their energy. And once you get closer to the coast, that's when you have those water temperatures in the upper 80s. So really, really warm water. That's also why tornadoes are a threat. So I think you have all this energy moving out of the warm waters and when it moves on land there's nothing to stop it so then you have friction that water does with land and that is what's causing those spin-ups that's what's causing the wind um to circulate in the atmosphere and that's what can cause those quick tornadoes now we don't have anything confirmed this morning but we have had warnings pop in and out but even the winds that we're seeing they could do just as much damage you know flying debris enough to knock power lines down trees down that's why those power outages are going to be so extensive um so i will say you know with mm-hmm. with a hurricane or just any land falling tropical system i think there are basically four components that you're watching the rain which we're seeing right now really heavy rain strong winds storm surge that we've been watching from galveston bay to matagorda bay and then the chance for tornadoes. And all of these components, all four, are basically playing out this morning. Now, Cheetah, was Beryl pretty much what you expected? I mean, unlike the storms that we had six weeks ago, uh, you know, which took everybody by surprise, has, uh-huh, this, right. has this been pretty much what y'all thought it would be? You know, it's interesting. I had a live interview with um, Dr. Michael Brennan, who's the director from the National Hurricane Center this morning live on TV. And I asked him the same question that you're asking me. I said, Mm -hmm. "Okay, how did the forecast play out? I think what was difficult with this, because Beryl had interaction with the Yucatan, you know, went from a cat five to a cat three, made landfall over the Yucatan. We models could not get a hold of what it would do after land. You know, sometimes when you have a hurricane make landfall, remember I was saying it just completely dies out, it loses its energy. Mm-hmm. And if that would have been the case, it would have kept this more westerly trek into Mexico. So that's why over the past, like, let's say four days, you know, really, really since Thursday, um, we've continued to see that track shift northward. So when you're talking about, you know, the forecast, you know, compared to what we were thinking, let's say from the 4th of July, it's shifted. It's shifted a lot. You know, it's really shifted over the city where we were thinking this was more of a Brownsville, you know, Texas, Mexico border event. Mm -hmm. And then it ended up basically a Houston hurricane, uh, even though it made landfall in Matagorda County. What we were expecting, though, from what's the past 36, 48 hours. Yeah, it did play out as expected. Yeah, it's just sometimes, you know, I don't know if you remember Nicholas, but Nicholas was a similar size and intensity, similar setup, but most of the energy stayed offshore. So we really didn't get that many impacts except for some storm surge. This played out as forecasted. And, you know, I think sometimes people want to think, oh, it's not going to be that bad. Yeah. Right? You know, you want to think like, nah. We'll see if that really happens. And I get it because sometimes that can happen. But this time the forecast held, right? So yeah. it, so the forecast for the short term, I think, was pretty close. But if you're looking at more of a long-term forecast, uh, you know, it just continued to shift. And it was the worst for us. Mm-hmm. And we're just we now were, starting. I mean, we're just in the beginning of hurricane season. And that's another key takeaway. We were expecting a very active season, but you didn't think, you know, with letter B, right? You didn't think with barrel. We just got finished with Alberto. And it is. It's, we were expecting some of these storms to be able to make it through the Caribbean. Um, the, the director from the National Hurricane Center was saying that, that, you know, oftentimes when you have such warm water temperatures, you have a higher percentage of these tropical systems making it through the Caribbean. And that's basically what we're seeing. Now, after this, you know, we keep it calm for a little bit, but you're right. You know, once you get into mid-August or mid-September, that is the peak of hurricane season. So it's early, but not the earliest. We can go back to, you know, historical data to show that. 
Uh, Cheetah, yeah, I cannot, I cannot thank you enough for checking in, and yes. <laughs> I apologize that we're literally doing this on my cell phone. It's yeah, hilarious. No, you, but you know what? Kudos to you. That's what you have to yeah. do. You know, yeah. our job is to inform the public of what's going on and the threats outside. So we have to do what you have to do. You know. So I think any way we can always get the messaging out. Oh, absolutely. Amazing that y'all figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check back with you a little bit later. I wish you the best. I know you got a busy yeah, day you ahead too. of you, and. Uh, Thank you so much, Cheetah. Good luck. Okay, okay talk All to right. you later. Bye bye. All right, bye. Bye. And that was Cheetah Craft from KO211. You're hanging out with the Rula and Ryan show on 104.1 KRBE. It is 711 right now. And we did get an update from Centerpoint. Over 1,133,000 um, Houston Texans are without power wow. right now. Wow. Yeah. So a lot is going on. Uh, you can text KRBE's text line 37530 and keep us updated with what's going on with everybody because um, we know there's so many different power outages and we're going to keep you updated with as much information as we know. Yep. When we come back, we'll give you all the latest that we have on what the closings are, where some of the high water is. Bottom line is, please, for the love of God, stay off the roads Unless you're an essential worker, do not be out there. It is really bad. We'll be right back on the Roland Ryan Show. It is 719 on the Roland Ryan Show. You've got myself, Ryan. You've got Sam and Ahmad with you this morning. Uh, I'm telling you, stay off the roads. The roads are so very, very dangerous. Don't even go outside. If you think of the storm that we had, what, six, six weeks ago? When yes. Everybody lost power. And the only people that passed away were people that ventured outside. Stay indoors if you can. I mean, I know that we're looking at a lot of people without power right now. Over a million one hundred and thirty three thousand power outages as of seven nineteen. Uh, we're under a tornado watch until 10 a.m. Barrel is a category one hurricane. Winds of 80 miles per hour on the coastal areas. Yeah. 60 miles per hour right now in the Houston inland areas. And uh, we're going to try and keep you updated as much as we can this morning. A flood watch is in effect right now. Yeah, and we noticed that driving in. So um, I know we have a lot of essential workers going to work right now and kind of giving us text updates. So thank you so much. Our KRBE's text screen is 37530 because we do understand that some you know essential workers do need to get out. So mm -hmm. if you have anything that you're seeing on the roadways, you can give us that information again at KRBE's text line 37530. But like Ryan said, there's over a million people without power power uh, right now. So we're going to try and keep you updated with everything we can. If you can stream us on your phone or any of your devices, uh, we have a free KRBE app. I know a lot of people are using um, battery operated radios. Old school radios. Yeah, I they're know. having to do that right now because you know what? There have been problems with some of the phone companies right now. I know yes. that our phone company is having a problem at the moment and it you can't reach us at the moment, but I'd like to let people know, please program this into your, program this into your phone, okay? The new KRBE KRBE number is 833-390-KRBE, and that is 833-390-5723. The old number is not working at all. This number will be the new number. It should be working right now, but unfortunately, like I said, problem with the phone companies. So just put that in your speed dial, 833 Five seven two three. It's that yeah. easy. And uh, you can always text us. We have that three seven five three zero, and that is a live text screen. So if you text me right now, I will see it probably in ten seconds. Um, and that's how we're kind of communicating with anybody that's checking in on family members or certain surrounding areas. But like we said, over a million people are without power. So if you have all of, um, if you have power right now, and you're fortunate mm -hmm. enough to have power, I know right now. Um, I don't want to jinx myself, but I know my husband has power right now at the house. So I'm like, please charge everything that you possibly can. Oh, yeah. um, as everybody knows, when you don't have power, the refrigerator goes very quickly. So try and keep that closed. I think the temperature right now here in Houston is about 77. Last I checked. So thankfully, it is not too hot right, right now. Um, but with the wind, we could maybe look at that as a benefit that it's kind of keeping it a little cool. Uh, yeah. If you want to try and look on the plus side of any of this. It shouldn't be hitting the 80s till around 2 this afternoon. Yeah. So thankfully for that, because we know how hot it is here in Houston, um, you know, we're trying to give you guys as much information as possible with what is all going on. So uh, people that do have power, I would highly friendly reminder, 
uh, plug everything in, charge whatever you can. Charge, and people charge, that don't charge, yeah. um, see what you can maybe keep, get the ice out of the freezer, put things in the cooler. I know for us personally, you know, my son is drinking milk right now. So I was like, as soon as the power goes out, please take those precautions. Oh, yeah. We went and bought bags and bags of ice. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah. yeah. See, and we didn't do that. Um, So, and it's probably way too late now. So, if you hear that idea, it's like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, it's a little too late. Please stay home. Please do not leave if you don't need to. Uh, We want to keep everybody safe here in Houston. Yeah. And once again, uh, pretty much all schools closed at the moment. I can't think of anybody oh, that would be open. I know there's some summer schools and there's some colleges yeah, that are open. Yeah, definitely call and uh, confirm. Are closed. They're all closed right now. Uh, Galveston yesterday, they did declare uh, a disaster declaration is what it was. And they didn't have a mandatory evacuation. However, one home has been reported destroyed on the west end of Galveston. City facilities in Galveston are going to be closed today and only essential personnel will report to work. That means police and fire services will continue as normal. Ferry ferry operations uh, suspended until further notice. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking of going out and you had plans anywhere in Houston, they've been canceled. Yeah. It is 7.37 right now on the Roland Ryan Show. I'd like to remind everybody, we have a new phone number, and if you want to program it in, it's 833-390-KRBE. That is 833-390-5723. Program that in your phone. We are having difficulties with the new phone number right now. It's not because it's a new phone number. It's because the phone company is out right now. Yes. So that's why we're giving the time right now. A lot of people really are listening on just old school battery operated radios at yeah. the moment. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because I mean, you've got over a million, 133,000 people without power at the moment. And it's not picking on one particular area. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. It's everywhere. Right now, the latest is the eye of this hurricane. Hurricane Barrel is a category one hurricane. The eye is over Needville headed towards Fort Bend County. Right now, I know that I was reading an article um, just a few moments ago. The Rosenberg Police Department has deployed officers in high water vehicles, and that is for rescue. Okay. And I'm telling you, y'all, these people are miracle workers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they basically saved me a few years ago when we had a storm before you joined the show, Sam. Yeah. Um, and I told you the story when we began the show that. Uh, I always wondered, how do these people end up with their cars under an underpass and go underwater? Sometimes it comes up so quick you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I was completely submerged underwater, and they used these gigantic contraptions to pull me out of that car. And I swam out of my vehicle. So, please, I just want to stress, do not be on the roads under any circumstance. The roads are flooded. I mean, too many high water locations to even list at the moment. Absolutely. So if you have to go to work, because we understand there's a lot of essential um, employees that do need to get to work, uh, we're trying to give you updates on what roads are flooded. um, But as Ryan was saying, I mean, Houston is just massive. So for us to try and give you the exact location, it's a little difficult. So if you're out and about and you need to text us for us to either mention to other people on the roads or if we can pass that information along, our phone number is 37530 is the text. We get that pretty much within like 15 seconds of you sending us mm-hmm. that. Um, thank you for all the essential workers that are working right now as well. And if you are... Um, Wondering if you have to go to work, just call your boss, figure it out. You know, it's it's safer for you to be at home than getting out and getting stranded on the roads, like Ryan was saying, because even this morning when we were getting on the road, which was at 5 a.m. and now it's 740. Uh-huh. You couldn't even see the street. Oh, no. It was terrible. The the lines, you could not see that. So, And I'm in a Jeep Gladiator, which is thankfully lifted, but not a lot of people have that. They have the lower car. So um, if you can stay home, please stay home. We were even talking about different areas with the rainfall. We're over here off of I-10 West... I'm sorry. No, we're here at Gessner, Gessner and Westheimer. Westheimer. Yeah. I always take I-10 to get here, so that's why I say that. But we're (laughs) Westheimer and... uh, Gessner. And I think right now on the map, there's a map that we were referring to earlier. It's called Harris County FWS.org, yeah. which is the flood warning system. It looks like right now, the, this tells us how much rain has fallen. And these are the inch measurements. I mean, just in our area, it's around seven inches. So it varies yeah. all over town. Everywhere. Yes. I mean, um, anywhere from five to seven inches. I haven't seen anybody get eight yet, but once again, that website is Harris County FWS. Oh, no, there's definitely dot like org. eight. Oh, um, you have seen eight? Right off of um, I 10 and uh, 610. Oh, wow. Is you are right. 8.08. 
Uh, wow. Downtown Houston, it's saying around 5.36. This is the amount of uh, inches from the rainfall uh, in the last 24 hours. You know, I think a lot of us, and I'm guilty of it myself mm-hmm. at times, where it's like, ah, oh, we'll make it through this. You know, because mm-hmm. we all, um, we were just so shocked the last storm we had where all the trees went down and none of us saw it coming. Right. Mm-hmm. And People were out of power for days. Yeah. So put a lot of people on high alert. And then some people will be like, eh, it's not going to be as bad as that one. No, it's bad. It's really bad. It's a hurricane. It's the last storm, we didn't really have a name for it and we weren't prepared for it. But this one, you know, at least we got warning for this. Um, so we are prepared that we're in it right now. We're in the, what, tornado uh, watch until 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And uh, once again, like I said, 6 to 12 inches plus rain is what they're expecting by tomorrow morning. That's a lot, y'all. You got to stay off those roads. Uh, I know that closings everywhere. Basically, if you have any kind of summer school, it's obviously not happening today. Uh, I know the Houston Zoo closed yesterday. Uh, Space Center Houston is closed today. Uh, Metro services are going to remain suspended until further notice. Harris Health has closed all of its outpatient and clinic facilities today. And... uh, once again, the eye of that hurricane is over Needville, right there in Wharton County, headed towards Fort Bend County. Please stay off yeah. those roads. I just got an emergency alert on my phone from National Weather Service. A flash flood warning is in effect for this area until 11 a.m. So they moved it to 11. I think it was before till 10. Um, so do not attempt to travel unless you're fleeing an area subject to flooding or under an evacuation order. And then it just says, you know, to please report any right. of the flooding to and the we're National in the Weather West Service. Chase area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You really shouldn't even be outside, to be honest with you. No, stay inside. They were talking about the Those only trees people. trees are not safe. No, the only people that passed away during that last storm were people that went outside. Mm. Yeah. So you want to stay inside. And thankfully, we're not even looking at temperatures that are going to hit the 80s until really about two in the afternoon when the rain is pretty much kind of died down right and the uh, heavy rain will die down around two this afternoon what's the current the current tally right now 1.3 million homes without power 1.3 million million. wow and like we said earlier it's just gonna keep climbing sadly it's it's everywhere you know when it was pitch black and i couldn't see the roads coming in this morning the only thing i saw was that really weird looking green blue flash and those mm-hmm. are transformers blowing and i saw it four times happen in all different directions east east west north south it's happening everywhere so we're all in this together we're going to try and keep you informed as much as we can we're going to cut away to khou and they can give you uh, more up to date and then we have at eight o'clock this morning coming up in just about 15 minutes we'll check in with jeff linder yes he just confirmed so okay yes, he fantastic will be he is our chief meteorologist for harris county we'll be checking with jeff